The release of Okami in 2005 was greeted with nigh universal acclaim, but it was only over time that its cult following would fully blossom. Semi regular re releases have kept memories of the game alive and helped introduce it to new audiences. It's understandable then that fan demand for an Okami 2 has endured. Capcom did attempt a sequel of its own on Nintendo DS, the less successful Okami Den, albeit without the involvement of the original's developers Clover Studio and its director Hideki Kamiya. It's partly for this reason that requests to see a quote unquote true sequel continue, as enthusiasts entertain the prospect of a follow up helmed by those responsible for the first game. In this video, I bring you the story of how such a project did once come close to finally happening. Suggestions of an Okami 2 project have a long history, and not just among fans. Fuel has been added to the fire on numerous occasions by Hideki Kamiya himself. A year after Clover Studio disbanded in 2006, the director spoke to Kotaku about his desire to create a sequel to Okami, but shared word of a possible obstacle in the way of one happening in the near future. He said that Okami's producer Atsushi Inaba had gotten into an argument with the heads of Capcom, an incident which he also attributed as one of the reasons for Clover being shut down by them. Kamiya and Inaba by this point both worked together at Seed Inc, which would later become Platinum Games after a merger with Odd Inc in 2007. The possibility of bad blood between Capcom and Inaba was the subject of speculation for some time to come, possibly spurred on by Platinum Games and Capcom having little to no public relationship. Rumours about the two possibly collaborating would persist in various forms over the years despite this, without anything meaningful materialising from them. Platinum found work elsewhere, finding a partner in Sega who published projects of theirs like Bayonetta and Vanquish. It wasn't until around a decade after the split between members of Platinum and Capcom that talks between the two parties reportedly started to resume. Speculation about possible preliminary discussions between members of Capcom and Platinum started to heat up back in 2015. At Gamescom in August of that year, Kamiya talked to Metro about the possibility of working with Capcom in the future. He said, There's a sense that if there's ever a chance that we can not only work together, but help bring new life into maybe a Capcom title, or work on a Capcom partnership, I would very much welcome the opportunity. In that same interview, he noted that he was planning to meet with a certain Capcom producer. After I return from Gamescom, I'm meeting up with Jun Takeuchi at Capcom, and we're going to talk about what's been going on, and this is long overdue. It's unknown if this meeting had any place in reinvigorating relations between Capcom and Platinum, but it was not long after this that representatives of the two companies are said to have begun meeting in late 2015. In what might also be connected to these events, Kamiya happened to issue a poll on Twitter in November 2015, asking fans which Capcom project they would like to see him tackle. The two options listed were for either a sequel to Okami or Devil May Cry. According to sources linked to the two companies, discussions between Capcom and Platinum were being spearheaded primarily by Tatsuya Minami, the founder and then president of Platinum Games. Over the years, he had developed a reputation in the industry for his keen ability to cut deals with large publishers. He has been credited with arranging partnerships with Nintendo, Activision, Square Enix, and Microsoft. As the prolific studio continued piling on more work, he now had Capcom in his sights for a potential collaboration. Employees from the publishers say this interest was reciprocated by by Capcom, who had been privately expressing an interest in reviving some of their classic IPs. Now the possibility arose that Platinum Games could be responsible for developing one of those revivals. Sources associated with the two entities say that the talks were amicable, but Capcom had its share of reservations about working with Platinum, chief among which were cost related. It was estimated by Capcom's people that outsourcing a major project to Platinum would cost significantly more than it would to develop it in Internally. They also had concerns about the management of Platinum and their ability to rein in their directorial talent to keep projects on schedule and within budget. On the other hand, Capcom had plenty of positives they were weighing up about the studio as well. Hiring Platinum Games for a big budget resurrection of a beloved IP would be an easy way to score a healthy dose of goodwill from fans. Another important factor that was apparently influencing Capcom
Qualcomm's decision was Platinum's experience with Unreal Engine 4. Born out of a partnership with Epic Games Japan, Capcom had been licensing UE4 to develop one of the biggest games in their lineup at the time, Street Fighter V. Impressed with its capabilities and having secured a licensing arrangement, they were now interested in building feature tiles in this engine and were looking for teams with the know-how to use it. It just so happened that Platinum Games was in the middle of developing an Unreal Engine 4 game of their own, Scalebound. Over time, it seems that Platinum was able to put some of Capcom's doubts to rest. Several workers privy to the discussions say that by early 2016, talks had progressed to the two parties discussing specific properties they could potentially work on. One was intended to be selected, and a project would enter pre-production at an undecided point in the new feature at Platinum. Sources indicate that two of the series they had narrowed it down to were Okami and Beautiful Joe. However, out of these two, Capcom reported reportedly favoured Okami. Although there was some enthusiasm for Beautiful Joe making a return among some Platinum staff, Capcom's higher-ups were apparently concerned about the property's commercial viability. The original games were modestly successful back in the 2000s, even spawning an anime adaptation, but Capcom had done little to maintain awareness of Beautiful Joe post-2005. Aside from a port to the PS2, the first game had never been re-released, and it had been over 10 years since the last game in the series, Beautiful Joe Double Trouble. Conversely, Okami had enjoyed numerous reissues on the Wii and PS3, granting the IP greater mindshare in the long term. As negotiations continued, an Okami 2, a proposed true successor to the cult classic, became the frontrunner. The long-running gulf between Capcom and Platinum was closing, as preliminary plans were on the table. Before any kind of development could begin, however, a potential deal was put into jeopardy by events surrounding Platinum Games CEO Tatsuya Minami. Several sources connected to the two companies claimed that a rift was forming between Minami and the rest of his own studio. Minami had reportedly been at odds with other senior members of Platinum over his management of the company. Allegations regarding the nature of their disagreements saw wide ranging in their severity. Some say that Minami's lack of communication with members of the studio had alienated him. Other former employees allege that important financial matters too were being kept from Platinum's board by Minami. These rumours about possible issues with his management of the company began spreading in early 2016. Then, on April 21st, 2016, the news emerged that Tatsuya Minami was stepping down from his role at Platinum Games for unspecified reasons. He had quietly departed from the company in March. Sources inside Platinum at the time claimed that Minami was ousted from the company by board members as an outcome of his ongoing disagreements with them. Before long, these events would lead to their potential project with Capcom coming undone prematurely. Hearing word of turmoil at Platinum, Capcom's management took action, scrapping plans to move forward with a new Okami. A risk-averse Capcom had already been cautious in their approach to the possible collaboration, and their chief point of contact at Platinum abruptly leaving was enough for them to put a stop to it. A project heavily requested for over 10 years was over before it could begin. Tatsuya Minato Minami stepped back from the games industry, and Platinum Games continued work on other projects. Sources at Capcom suggest that the company still enjoys a friendly relationship with Platinum, and despite this setback, a partnership with them is not beyond the realm of possibility. In March 2018, Hideki Kamiya was pictured at Capcom playing a build of Okami HD on Nintendo Switch prior to its announcement. For more videos like this one, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to help me continue my research, consider supporting me on Patreon like these kind people did. I've been Liam, and I hope you'll join me for another Game History Secrets.